you guys think that, which this might be a narcissist question, if you were arrested <laughs> and put into a prison, even not even like a hardcore prison, do you think, knowing what we've seen from TV, movies, and I guess the real world, do you think you could escape from prison? No. no. Can I say though? I didn't know we were starting. I thought this was a genuine off the cuff question. It <laughs> could still be a genuine <laughs> off the cuff question. <laughs> just wanted to roll into it. I was like a narcissist question from Gavin Berger. I <laughs> crazy. What a concept. Well, I say narcissist because if you're like, oh, I can for sure escape. That's kind of a narcissist well, I answer. I feel like I've seen Shawshank so many times. Yeah. <laughs> that I may have figured it out. Mm -hmm. But it takes place in like the 40s. So yeah. I don't know if technology's gotten better since then or well, the ship pipes have gotten smaller. I don't know. <laughs> well, nowadays, yeah, it, I assume I assume it'd be pretty hard to break out. Yeah. What about just to give you a random year, 1962? <laughs> mm. You think you could break out in 1962? Well, yeah, pre Kennedy assassination for sure. <laughs> for yeah. sure. Well, some people did break out of prison in 1962. Tell us more. What a transition. <laughs> so this week, you know, we're not going to even introduce ourselves. Hopefully no. people have listened long enough that they know it. We're cutting that. If you don't know who we are, listen to past episodes. We've already said it a bunch of times. And you'll probably put in the, the little description or something, too. Right. Yeah, you'll well, yeah, it'll you'll sell, figure uh, it out, okay? <laughs> this can... episode is for the fans. This yeah. is <laughs> for the real homies. So at this point, people should know. And if yeah. they don't know, get Step with it. it. But also, if they're new, welcome. thank you so much for listening. Welcome. As we up. just berated them. Yeah, <laughs> welcome. As, I, as we just said. One of the things that I'm already excited for, but again, also scared about this episode is it comes from... The, re or the reason why I say, this is a better way to put it. The reason why I say you should check out past episodes mm. is because similarly to a past episode, D.B. Cooper, uh, we are back on the FBI website. It's about and time. I, I am happy Love to that. report it's not any less scary to be on that website. Can I say my favorite part of recording these episodes is ending up on the strangest websites on the internet with you guys. Oh, it's yeah. the best. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, though, it's a very reputable website. Like, it's not like I'm on sure. like some like deep dark web, like fake news website. It's the FBI website, but it also shows even the FBI has got some pretty simple looking websites. Mm -hmm. Look, their budget isn't going towards their web design team. And yeah, honestly, I'm okay with that. They can go to better things. I would probably rather like if their website was like too good. Uh, it's then not it's like, it's not bad. It like, it doesn't look dated. Yeah. Um, well, the, the, okay, the Alcatraz section does not look Okay, dated. wait, I'm not yeah. there yet. Hold on. Give me a sec. It, it like, looks, looks, they got nice fonts. Um, yeah. No, and there's the pictures and the yeah. borders. It's not like the D.B. Cooper section, which was oh. dated. Yeah. If anything, this one's a little, this one's a little nicer. This was in the famous cases and criminal section. Because another thing that, again, if you listen to the past episode that we talked about, the money might not be going to their website design, but it for sure is going to like someone writing these stories because <laughs> they they love to paint a picture. <laughs> they really do. They're like, this is their moment. They're they're hiring communication majors <laughs> to work at the FBI to write these stories. What if it's like Which, an intern? What if it's like oh, an it definitely intern? is. It definitely is. Some poor undecided major. <laughs> It's not like they're having like Jagger Hoover write the page or well, whoever. That'd be, like, that'd be impressive because he's long dead. <laughs> well, that or who's the who's the current guy? Is it Chris person, Ray? Is that the person that Trump did or did Trump do the other guy? Yeah, Trump appointed him. Christopher Ray. Are they? Yeah. So I don't. I have a feeling he's not. Although I wouldn't be shocked if it was like someone like him being like. I don't want to deal with actual FBI work. Let's reminisce. Let me write a story about a time that the FBI failed, which again, why That's all these they, are, right? It's all like, Ooh, we, Ooh, what happened? Sorry to spoil it, but the FBI failed again. So 
I hope they never see this. There's a the FBI. There's They're a 99... listening to it as we record. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's another fair point. Considering, I mean, well, actually, considering how many times I've gone on this website, I'm sure they are aware. You are flagged. I am so flagged. Today for work, I had to do a lot of research on the Capitol building and like Mm. the hallways and like entrances and exits. Don't ask me why. So I'm sure they're already keeping tabs on me today. All right, so they're, I, they're keeping tabs on me because I've been looking through all these famous cases. They were like, what is he's trying to become? He's trying to get on that list. We're looking at Shia because he's looking at the Capitol building. And now all of a sudden we're on a call together. They're like, what are they planning? Yeah. And, and I was in the Capitol building last week. So we're all going to jail. <laughs> I was also in D.C. last weekend. So we, they are like, what are these people doing? You know oh what? I God. hope our, the... FBI agents that are designated to each of us. I hope they're fans of the pod. I hope they're I little hope cuties. Like I hope they're enjoying I us. Hope yeah. so. I hope they are. I, I really do. Y'all, whoever you are. Yeah. Doing. I wish that they put like author like next to whoever wrote this because well, they, they got to keep the mystery alive. True. This one's pretty good. And so the reason why I again bring up the FBI website is because pretty much everything that I'm going to read is from this website because I also think it's also think it's kind of not because I didn't want to do more research. Because you know I love doing research. Mm-hmm. It's because of the, some of the ways that they phrase stuff. I before we continue, let's let's keep trash talking the FBI website real quick. Because yeah. up at the top where they've got like the connect with us icons, they've got Facebook, email, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, and what's that? Oh, it's Flickr. They've got a Flickr. As I oh, oh. what's on Flickr? I yeah. don't even know what Flickr is. If you click it's on it, it's image just website. Yeah, oh. they, they've just got pictures of like evidence oh. lockup. Oh, wow. What is that doll? I don't like this doll. Charles Pretty Boy Floyd's death mask? No. If you go a few down, there's a oh. micro dot doll. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like it. So you hear it here first, folks. Check out the FBI's Flickr. Yeah. Which, if you look under, you know where it's like the famous cases and criminals line? Yeah. They've Under the artifacts line, they've got like all these famous, which, you know, maybe we'll do an episode talking about the FBI's all their famous artifacts. We'll do a field trip. We'll go to like the FBI museum or whatever. If you think we're allowed anywhere near the FBI at this point, <laughs> you have lost it. <laughs> there is no way we are allowed for sure within a mile radius, let alone in the city of Washington, <laughs> DC. So you got to find a new job. I- <laughs> if we learn anything from this episode, we should learn how to escape mm-hmm. Uh prison that no longer exists from in the 60s yeah why don't you tell us about this oh sorry i just heard the cat (laughs) all right so again the reason why i set all this up is because the way that the fbi sets this up i find very funny okay in its heyday it was the ultimate maximum security prison (laughs) just showing that it is no longer in its heyday are you laughing at the meowing? <laughs> uh, yeah. You gotta be quiet, dude. <laughs> Located on a lonely island in the middle of San Francisco Bay, Alcatraz, aka The Rock, has held captive since the Civil War. But it was in 1934, the high point of a major war on crime, that Alcatraz was refortified into the world's most secure prison. Its eventual inmates included dangerous public enemies like Al Capone and George Machine Gun Kelly. MGK was there? His... <laughs> Let me finish this sentence and then we'll touch back on that. Because I... Don't worry, I was going to touch upon that. <laughs> dangerous public enemies like Al Capone and George Machine Gun Kelly, criminals who had history of escapes and the occasional odd character like the infamous Birdman of Alcatraz. Going back to Machine Gun Kelly, <laughs> or George Machine Gun Kelly. Right. I I feel like I knew that Machine Gun Kelly was named after a gangster, but mm-hmm. like that was like something like a fact I learned about years ago that then forgot about. And then I was reading this and you think, all right, so there's Al Capone. There's some other odd character called the Birdman of Alcatraz. And then there's just Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> 
I hope it, he, I wish I, with every bone on my body, I hope they looked exactly the same, same vibe, everything. <laughs> same tattoos. <laughs> I did not know that he had taken his, his name from a gangster. So this is yeah. nice to me. Sadly, the prison doesn't exist anymore. So it's not like the current Machine Gun Kelly can. Well, it exists. Parts. It's just not open anymore. The, well, uh, or it's like, you can like tour it. It's yeah. like a, a tourist functioning attraction. prison. Yeah. yeah. It's not, it's not a functioning prison. I would love to Machine see Machine Gun, Gun Kelly. Kelly might be there. <laughs> he could <laughs> be. Not I would love to see him prison. there to be like, I'm revisiting my roots and I'm trying to figure out where I came from. Like that show on PBS. <laughs> yeah. We get, yeah. The one where they were like, it's like he's sitting across from something and they go, well, like, do your given name is all of this, but your chosen name, you were an Alcatraz. <laughs> the 1930s. It was, it was a crazy time because, you know, sure. they, it's the, definitely not as technically savvy as they were now depressing almost (laughs) yeah greatly greatly depressing yeah uh but it was a very formidable place before they turned it into a tourist attraction in the 1930s alcatraz was already a forbidding place surrounded by cold rough waters of the pacific the redesigned included tougher iron bars a series of strategically positioned guard towers and strict rules including a dozen checks a day of the prisoners escaped seemed nearly impossible foreshadowing again this is taken directly off the fbi's he website were nearly <laughs> nearly impossible the fbi they love a good foreshadow <laughs> if not anything else they love a little foreshadowing despite the odds from 1934 until the prison was closed in 1963 36 men tried 14 separate escapes Nearly all were caught or didn't survive the attempt. Nearly. Again, <laughs> again with a the nearly. They love a nearly. The fate of three particular inmates, however, remains a mystery to this day. Here is their story. Again, mm-hmm. all from the FBI website. That was very like, what's that show? Oh my God. Dateline? No. Oh God, it's like the crime. Oh. BSI? Is that what yeah. it is? Law and yeah, Order. I feel like- Law and Order, the, the, they yeah. all does the cases are literally real. have like, yeah. here is their story. Bum, bum. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is their story. Then that's that's the Dick Wolf wrote this. That's why it doesn't say <laughs> he was he ghost wrote it. He yes. was like, I don't need credit. But the FBI was like, who do we go to to write something about crime? Dick Wolf. Dick Wolf. Easy. Person. Easy pick. Bum, bum. So we're mainly today, we're gonna be talking about. Three inmates that, if you couldn't tell by that wonderful introduction written by Dick Wolf, or the uh, title of this episode, or the title of this episode, or the description before you press play on this episode, um, did in fact escape. They also had a friend, but it's mainly three guys. Frank Morris arrived at Alcatraz in January 1960 after convictions for bank robbery, burglary, and other crimes and repeated attempts to escape various prisons. So, just a little, uh, He's just a little sneak. He's a little sneaky guy. He's just a little, he's just making a ruckus. That's what he's doing. <laughs> Later that year, a convict by the name of John Anglin was sent to Alcatraz, followed by his brother Clarence in early 1961. Runs in the family. Why is uh, Clarence's picture so low res, but John and Frank look like they were taken yesterday? <laughs> Frank's is really clear. <laughs> like clearer than some iPhone so pictures. Clear. Yeah. John, you can see the wrinkles on his forehead. Clarence, though, looks like it was taken with like a soda bottle. Like it's bad. Yeah. Like Frank and John, you could see like the shimmer in their eyes. Clarence looks like you took a picture, printed it out, scanned it back in, printed it out, scanned it back in, did that about 30 more times. And then gave it to the fbi you know it isn't the whole thing with the fucking government that they were just like enhance enhance picture <laughs> they couldn't have just sit enhance the clarence some guy in a chair maybe this is why they couldn't find him they couldn't <laughs> they just can't tell exactly they we're working was. with like the db cooper stuff still you can't yeah. find him well maybe it was because the other two guys they were 1960 oh this was clarence oh. came the following year they must have got a different camera hadn't worked on the, <laughs> the camera worse worse. camera <laughs> yeah i mean it's 1961 they're like oh wait we can't have good cameras yet we we're too we're too soon we gotta make oh, it shitty God. 
Um, so all three of them have known each other before previous stints in prison. Well, I'd assume that the brothers would. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I want to know. Nice. They all yeah. have buddies coming into prison. They're like, oh, I know this guy. It's fine. How small of a world is crime that, you know, John walks into prison. And he's like, Frank <laughs> from the other prison. Oh my God. What happened to you? Oh my God. Look at us. Look at us. This is crazy. Who would have thought? He, then a year later, Clarence is like, hey, guys. <laughs> and then you're like, get the, the fuck like, out Seinfeld of here. Music. Yeah. <laughs> and John is like, oh, my God. It's, it's, it's my Clarence, Clarence. Does a, Clarence does a Kramer entrance. <laughs> They're both just sitting there in their cell. Clarence comes in and he's like, hey, guys. And then there's like applause. <laughs> the studio audience goes nuts. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm. I don't know how it could be such a small world because it's not like, you know, somebody's trending on Twitter. It's like they all word of mouth and newspapers, I guess, Mm -hmm. for the most part, or radio. They had TV in 1962. Oh, well, but so then this they would have known each other before. And assuming that they were all going to prison in San Francisco, you'd have to imagine they all did crime in the area. Yeah. I feel like you're getting too hung up on the fact that they all knew each other one no. when two yeah. of them were brothers. <laughs> That's fair. The other thing that I didn't mention was how old they were, which I feel like is a valid thing to uh, bring up. Frank Lee Morris was born in 1926. And we're talking about 1960. So do 34. that. Matter. Yeah, 34. The other guys were younger. John was uh, 1930. Clarence was 31. So, pretty young guys. Of course, in the small world of crime, they were (laughs) assigned adjoining cells, uh, and they began hatching a plan to escape. I'm sure you don't have that much else to do when you're stuck in a maximum security prison. Uh, Morris was known for his intelligence, a little ringleader of the group. He took the lead in the planning, and they were aided by another inmate, Alan West. How Uh, do you like to be the guy who gets left behind, though? (laughs) The guy who didn't make it? Well, just wait. Because oh, okay. it's kind of funny what happens with Alan West. <laughs> I also feel like whoever was in charge of cell assignment in a high security prison, putting <laughs> brothers next, like in adjoining cells with like, hi, with <laughs> another friend. Like, I don't know if it's a great idea. Yeah. The kindergarten yeah. method of, you know, the separating, them. separating the friends. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but then we don't even need the buddy system in prison. If there was, if it was one of those, I don't even know what's a good movie to reference, but you know where it's usually that it's like all one big room and then like thing like uh, cells on both sure. the sides on multiple floors. If they were on like one side and the other guy was on the other side, the cell block. Frank could just be like, John, John, hey, we got to get out of immediate <laughs> recess. We got to get out of here. And like the brothers, they were probably like they'll. No, yeah, they should have separated the brothers. I this is a this is a new fun fact for podcast listeners, not for you guys. But I'm a twin, and uh, in preschool, uh, me and my twin brother were separated pretty quickly because <laughs> <laughs> this isn't this is I don't think this is the main reason. There's definitely a reason, but uh, in preschool, my brother would be like, "Hey, you write my name for me," so I wrote his name, and the teacher was like, "No, you like you need to learn how to write your name. You can't just have Gavin write your name." So in a similar way. They should have separated the brothers because you know they would have been colluding together to Mm -hmm. escape. Did you ever try to escape kindergarten with your brother? If I did, I didn't make it. (laughs) If I did, it had better security than Alcatraz. Have you ever tried to parent trap with your brother? I think we did in first grade because like when we were younger, we Mm. looked closer Okay. It's been with the age that we don't. Um, but I think we might have chickened out and been like, you know what? I don't think we look as much alike as we think we do. <laughs> that we like almost or like that we like walked in the class like after recess and the teacher was like, Oh, like Gavin, if you're looking for Simon, he's not here. That it's like, no, I am Simon. Wink wink nudge nudge. <laughs> and they were like, Okay, your class is down the hall. So get going. <laughs> so didn't quite work. Not gotcha. identical. Uh, although John and Clarence look pretty I- identical. They yeah. definitely look like, oh, well, I mean, they're not twins, but they twins. look pretty similar, even for brothers. Like, they got the same hairdo going. They could, they could pull a parent trap, but then one of them would still be stuck in there. On June 12th, 1962, 
So they've now been in there for two of them have been in there for close to two years. One of them has only been in there for one year. So not that much time. No. So on June 12th, 1962, the routine early morning bed check turned out to be anything but dun, dun, Again, dun. take <laughs> from the FBI website, word for word. Three convicts were not in their cells. You want to take a guess at who it was? <laughs> the three convicts were? Maybe the three people we had just been talking about? John Anglin, 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 his brother Clarence, and Frank Morris. In their beds were cleverly built dummy heads made of plaster, flesh toned paint, and real human hair that apparently fooled the night guards. The prison went into lockdown and intensive search began. Do you see the heads? I do. Where? Where did they get the uh, the materials? Do we get into that? Yeah, I think I do talk about it later. Okay. I know the hair they got from like the prison. The hair uh, seems like the easiest shop. thing to get. Yeah, if I'm being just, honest, they just took some hair from the floor of the barber shop. Yeah, I have to say, looking at this photo, the profile of the dummy, the hair, like placement, styling, execution, impeccable. Yeah, yeah, These for profile, men nailed could it. Have been like wig makers. It's stunning. It's what could have been? Hair. What could have been if they had the proper guidance? They even gave them eyebrows they, and yeah. eyelashes and eyelet, uh, voluminous eyelashes. Oh, I might yeah. add. Also, wow. I'm sure they probably only did the one, like three side profiles. They didn't make like full three oh, heads. So didn't, didn't think uh, of that. But then also, well, but that makes it nonetheless impressive because it just needs to lay on the one side, just enough for them to fool the night guards. Yeah, but true. if anything, wouldn't have been a little suspicious if like all three of them have the same dummy. They make three identical dummy heads. I guess for the brothers, okay, sure. or brothers, but then for Frank, probably should have gone with a different hairstyle. Although those are just kind of basic looking white guys with short hair, with like my hairstyle. <laughs> yeah, and when you're laying down in bed, y'all get bedhead. Yeah. Do I look like I could be the dummy? A yeah. little. <laughs> yeah. I see so, no difference. Yeah. It's in the same were they, picture. Were they trying to make them look like themselves or they were just like, we just need to look like, they just need to look like. I mean, they weren't trying they, to make it not look like themselves. Yeah. I think they just needed to fool the guards enough to be able to get away. Yeah. But they obviously knew the moment it was like, all right, everybody wake up that then the, then the, jig's the guards, up. the jigs up. So I think it was just yeah. that if you're just a guard scanning in the cells and you see someone with like, you know, the covers up, just they just they just needed enough. As I mean, yeah. this is much better than like if you put a like pillow, just a, more pillows or something, or if you have the covers pulled all the way up like this, at least it's like, I'm sure there was a lot of prisoners there if this was the peak time of alcatraz so i'm sure the night guards were just kind of it was a it was a regular day it was a summer day they were probably out enjoying the sun it was well i mean at night but still a beautiful <laughs> summer a beautiful summer night in san francisco oh sign me up i'm sure that they were like we want to go back out to the yard and like maybe they had a bonfire or something i don't know what i don't know what prison guards do but like, take it easy the FBI, our BFFs, top of their class. When they heard, what they morning, do? Ring, ring, ring. Hello. <gasps> They've escaped. We're on our way. Uh, the FBI was notified immediately and asked to help. Because, you know, they're so good at all this stuff. <laughs> they're so good at investigating. Their office in San Francisco set leads for offices nationwide to check for any records on the missing prisoners and on their previous escape attempts, which all three of them had made. Again, this cell assigning person said, these people are all flight risks. Let's put them <laughs> together. Let's, said, let's make a little club. They said, these rascals obviously know each other, so they should be comfortable with each other. Let's put them all near each other. Maybe it was like, a, you know, like hotels, how they'll be have like two rooms that then have like a door that connects for like families. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of that like so it's like two of the brothers in one cell and then like frank and alan in the other cell and then they're just like like slumber party come on in well let's get into let's get into the meat and potatoes because it is it does like we're joking a lot about it but it's kind of crazy how they escape but so like i just said they all had previous escape attempts so 
<laughs> this being also one of them, the FBI also interviewed relatives of the men and compiled all of their identification records and asked boat operators in the bay to be on the lookout for debris. Because again, they're not on the mainland. This is an island sure. in the Pacific, like far swim. Someone's got to notice them, which a uh, trending theme of where did they go, um, which we will get into more. Within two days, a packet of letters sealed in rubber and related to the men was recovered. Later, some paddle-like pieces of wood and bits of rubber inner tube were found in the water. A homemade life vest was also discovered washed up on the Cronkite Beach, but extensive searches did not turn up any other items in the area. Hmm. So similar to the D.B. Cooper episode, which you've, if you haven't listened, check it out, where you'd think, oh, they're probably traveling with so much, and yet only a little bit of it turns up, which points them in a vague direction, but still, like, they're whatever they left with, they're keeping that tight to the chest. For sure. Uh, but obviously, some sort of raft. And the fact that also the fact that they had life vests, I mean, good, but also, like, they didn't need life vests if they're in a rush. <laughs> <laughs> like, arguably, uh, but I'm glad they took the extra measure of safety to be like, sure. guys, we can't. You can't go out into the Pacific without life vests. You ever seen a movie? Which they probably hadn't seen that many movies because it was the 60s. Movies existed they then. They had movies. What do you think the 60s was? I don't know what the 60s were. If movies we were about 60 years old at that point. What are you talking about? I was not a film major. I don't know a lot about movies. I didn't take any sort of film analysis classes. See how I had to just make it more general? for people. <laughs> Any sort of classes analyzing film. I don't know. The inmates made wooden paddles to facilitate their escape. The brass bolts used in the construction of the paddle are identical to those used in a paddle that washed up on the shore of Angel Island just over a mile from Alcatraz. So either they had at least made it a mile away or floated downstream. Also, that's like a pretty solid life vest. How the, like, where were they hiding this stuff? I like, where did they get the sewing materials? Where did they get the fabric? Where did they get the bolts? When did they build it? <laughs> also, like, as proven, I don't know a lot about prison or cells or movies, mm. but I can't imagine there's a lot of places to hide things in cells. Also, yeah, where did they get bolts and large pieces of wood from? Well, in most there prisons like have, like, wood shops and um, yeah, metalworking shops, I guess. High security prisons? I get this is 1962. Have, like, hour. Yeah, and like there... like Gavin thinks it's the Stone Age, so it, high security wasn't that high. Yeah, I and mean, then the next year they killed the president. So like we were really they dropped the ball early 60s. If we're being honest, with yeah. security. <laughs> In the image description of the life vest, which I'll show on screen for those watching on YouTube, so watch check it out on YouTube if you're listening. It said that they appear to be vulcanized or sealed with the application of heat and pressure. Again, like, how isn't a common person doing this with well, very little supplies? I, here's my theory on that. I got a theory on that too. Because in prisons, a lot of times they're making license plates, right? The, the, the metal <laughs> presses, yeah. The okay. metal presses, so you use that to, to seal something for medically or I don't know. Look, yeah. I wasn't there. No, that's fine. I have an answer for you. It was in the next sentence. Oh, then I'll just <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> the heat was available from an exposed copper hot water pipe. <laughs> so you were there. You basically had it. Yeah. It's the same thing. <laughs> you were right there with them. Oh, shit. Okay. That's and funny. the pressure was applied with a large, heavy plank. I assume a plank that ended up being one of the paddles. I gave him uh, too much credit. The inmates may have gotten the idea to use vulcanization from magazines that were found in their cells. I don't know how many magazines are talking about searing plastic together. That means that they were, I don't, I don't know, they had like subscriptions to their favorite <laughs> like DIY magazine. Yeah, like that they had like, out, like they all got mail and had an outside plans and then it was like, 
oh yeah like what magazine are you reading and they were like entertainment weekly from, from the prison like, escape D. section of playboy <laughs> yeah how to escape a prison they're like what movie are they talking about in entertainment weekly shawshank <laughs> <laughs> just a coincidence the fbi obviously had to didn't know a lot because they didn't immediately find them and only kind of found what remained so this is how they were able to piece things together because you you know we know the fbi I love to piece together a little plan. Uh, as the days went by, the FBI, the Coast Guard, Bureau of Prison Authorities, and others began to find more evidence and piece together the ingenious escape plan. The FBI was aided by inmate Alan West, who we talked about earlier, who didn't make it out of his cell in time oh. and began providing the FBI with information. So that's where, like, the extra life vest came from, I guess. Like, it came floating up because they had a four. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. So Alan West, which was going to escape with them, and what I will talk about later, he didn't make it. So I don't know. What I don't know if I'll talk about later is whether he went back to his cell or whether they then found him and threw him back in the cell. And then I guess... I mean, he probably got time off his sentence or whatever to tell them how they the other guys escaped. I but... don't know that he would because he did try to escape. Yeah. Also, that'd be like, again, as we've talked about, crime is a small world. So, like, you don't want to throw your homies under the bus because there's a good chance you're all going to be That's in another true. prison together. Because <laughs> famously, snitches get stitches. Yes. So true. But here's what they learned from all of the evidence they found and whatever Alan West was willing to say. Uh, the group had begun laying plans the previous December when one of them came across old saw blades. They escaped in June. So they'd been playing this for like hmm. approximately six months using crude tools, including a homemade drill made from the motor of a broken vacuum cleaner. Wow. So they were really finding stuff. <laughs> Things were going missing. The plotters, as the FBI referred to them, each loosened the air vents in the back of their cell by painstakingly drilling through. They hid the holes with whatever they could, a suitcase, a piece of cardboard, etc. So if you look down at the picture of uh, the one on the left, they kind of like, I think instead of as opposed to sawing through the wall, they just kind of like drilled a bunch of holes close together so that then they could like break through it, mm -hmm. which... Mm -hmm. I can understand taking six months and then they got to just put something else in their cell in front of it to cover the fact that they're cutting this huge hole around a vent. But nonetheless, behind the cells was a common unguarded utility corridor, which I mean, I can understand if it's a huge prison and they've got like, you know, it's not like they're uh, worried about the rooms on the other side of these cells because, you know, who could who could escape? Who can escape? These guys can. Uh, they made their way down this corridor and climbed to the roof of their cell block inside the building where they set up a secret workshop. I love that the FBI is really painting a picture. There, in their secret workshop, uh, they took turns keeping watch for the guards in the evening before the last count. They used a variety of stolen and donated materials to build and hide what they needed to escape. I say donated because some other sources, it doesn't seem like people were giving them things to help them escape. They might have been taking things, but they might not have been given things. I do like the idea that all the inmates were like, you got this, guys. <laughs> Take my raincoat. Here you go. You got a better chance than I do. No one was like, can I come? They're like, sorry, we already got, we already got four seats and we're already going to bail on out. <laughs> we really only had three <laughs> seats. On our little raft. More than 50 raincoats that they stole. Oh, so now they're admitting it. Or gathered were turned into makeshift life preservers and a 16 by 14 foot rubber raft. Here's a question. Where, why, why would there be that many raincoats? Because if it's raining, wouldn't the prisoners just stay inside that day? I mean... 50 is not that much, I feel like, for a prison to have. But why would they have any, I guess, is my thing. 
maybe do they make them do work at Alcatraz? Like, do they have to be out? Oh, uh, I cook yeah. Or yeah. like, All I right. also I don't know. I could be making this up, but I feel like like outside time is like mandatory at some. Places. Yeah, so mm-hmm. you, know, you don't like, like you lose your mind. Outside. Yeah. All right. I guess that's yeah. fair. All right. Yeah. But even still, if you if you walk outside wearing your raincoat and all of a sudden you're coming back inside some guy doesn't have his coat and you have two coats that's a little suspicious and then that happens 49 to more times yeah or maybe they walk outside without their raincoat all of a sudden they're walking back in with it guards like where'd you get that raincoat he's like oh i just found it just it had my name in it (laughs) the seams were carefully stitched together and vulcanized by the hot steam pipes in the prison they also built wooden paddles and converted a musical instrument into a tool to inflate the raft. I, I, they didn't need to be so vague with the musical instrument. They I'm thinking told. brass. Oh, for sure. Like I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking trumpet. I'm thinking trombone. Yeah. Maybe not a woodwind, French horn. Woodwind, no, no, not a French horn. That's too much. I'm sure Woodwinds it was something. Aren't. I don't think the woodwind do it. Yeah, got to be something metal because then it probably won't break as easily if they're like rushing around with it. You know what I hope it was? A trombone? An accordion. Ooh. That could be a good. <laughs> yeah, pump it up. Super quiet. Just pump it up. They'd never yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Or a trombone if it was like. <laughs> like <laughs> all there. That could also be funny. I, regardless of whatever, in, and again, The FBI loves painting a picture. So I would love to just imagine the three guys. One of them is like peeking out, keeping watch for anyone. The other one's like (laughs) using an instrument to blow up the raft. And then the other one's probably either helping or just criticizing how he's doing it. See, I like to think it was a slide whistle so they could have some fun with it. (laughs) Yeah, maybe that's why they kept it vague so that it's a little something up to your imagination. Yeah. Yeah. Although in reality, it was probably just some sort of horn piece from a brass thing that you couldn't necessarily tell what it was from. But it is funnier to think it might have been a slide whistle. But also, where would they have come across a slide whistle that they could just snag? Where did they come across any of this stuff? (laughs) I feel like out of all of the instruments that we just named, the slide whistle is one the most likely and the easiest to grab. Actually, most, like most likely, most you see people are harmonica. sitting in their cell going, <laughs> this I sucks. just realized <laughs> prisoners are famous for harmonicas. Maybe they were using harmonicas. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they had a little marching band and they had to wear their raincoats outside because they were out <laughs> marching. And then they stole one of their instruments and they were like, you know what, while I'm here, or no, they were stealing their raincoat and they were like, you know what, while I'm here, I'm taking your fucking trumpet. <laughs> say also this is like so smart yeah, like, oh my so god resourceful and like i i mean i'm also not a criminal mastermind that's been in prison a couple times and escaped yeah tried to escape but like these are some really good ideas they are also because for them for that. yeah they uh drilled the holes around the vent but they obviously had no idea what if it was going to lead to a hallway, if it was going to lead to the outside, if it was going to lead to a room. So then it leads to a little room and then they're like, Ooh, little workshop. Like we can figure out all of our stuff out here. So, I mean, I'm sure that it was very much just plan it as they go, but yeah, it obviously, I mean, if they're planning it for at least six months, very well thought out and very, well, I don't know if they had escaped successfully from other prisons but they had attempted escapes on other prisons. Mm -hmm. So they also had a vague idea. They knew it didn't work. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. They knew it didn't work, especially if this was then going to be, you know, higher security than anything that they've ever been to. Um, But at the same time, they were looking for a way out of the building. Obviously, that's (laughs) the whole point. The ceiling was a good 30 feet high, but using a network of pipes, they climbed up and eventually pried open the ventilator at the top of the shaft. They kept it in place temporarily by fashioning a fake bolt out of soap. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's where it, uh... so that was, this is then their plan. 
And now let's hear how it went. Uh, on the evening of June 11th, they were ready to go. Again, FBI website. This is directly from them. <laughs> I love painting a picture. West, though, did not have his ventilator grill completely removed and was left behind. That's so sad. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Why couldn't they do it another day? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, they had their opportunity. I also, after looking at the the photo of this like halfway drilled through escape route, I have really bad trypophobia. What's that? Is that the one with it's the holes? When you, the holes. You like yeah. it like you have a really big fear of like clusters. There's of a lot of little tiny what holes. If I've never had... heard of this before. Yeah. It's Do like... shower heads spook you? No, it depends on the person. For me, it's like things that naturally occur. So like like a beehive? Yeah, be oh no, I don't like beehives. <laughs> um, or like in rocks and stuff, but like great stuff don't freak me out. But like because this isn't like a rock or like yeah. brick or whatever, that would freak me out. What if he just had trypophobia and he was like, I can't do it. I can't keep making this. Do you do think it. he was just like drilling it? Like, <laughs> oh my like, God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. No, because oh it's hard. Like you get, oh you get nauseous. Yeah. You, you feel like physically mm-hmm. sick when it happens. Interesting. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Do you think maybe when he had drilled a certain amount of holes, all of a sudden that might've tripped it off that then it was like, he does like the 10th hole and then all of a sudden he's like, oh my God, like <laughs> it didn't seem like a cluster of holes until that last one. Now it really seems scary to me. Um, but the other, going back to the fake bolt out of the bar of soap, I think the reason why they did that was because they didn't drill it and leave or get out that day. They like made it all loose and then kept it in place with the bar of soap so they could come back to it later, which again, why don't they give Alan another fucking day <laughs> to get his shit also, together? So like they made these openings to like get into their little workshop space. Mm-hmm. So does that mean that he was he wasn't able to like help with any of the building of any like he was just like guys I'm still working on my hole sorry, but I'll catch you on the day you escape I'll be done by then like <laughs> yeah I I don't know I wonder I mean we talk about how their cells were probably near each other but I wonder. Oh, they must have been because they must have been. But also, what are the odds that they were neighbors? But also, I guess it would make sense that they were neighbors because if they're both getting out to the same back room. I don't know if uh, I assumed that. But you know what they say about assuming. Alan was actually the youngest. He was born in 1929. Wow. Spring chicken. Yeah. So he's real young. And uh, he was arrested over 220 times throughout his life and after an escape attempt from the florida from the oh from the florida state prison he was transferred the florida state penitentiary yeah he was transferred to alcatraz so i mean i didn't get into all the whole backstory of all the other ones but anywho so west was left behind rest in peace to the homie alan west Uh, oh no the three our homies, uh, the three others got into the corridor, gathered their gear, climbed up and out through the ventilator and got onto the prison roof. Then they shimmied down the bakery smokestack at the rear of the cell house, climbed over the fence and snuck to the northeast shore of the island and launched their raft, which. If Alan didn't make it with them, how mm-hmm. does the FBI know that's what happened? I assume that's then he probably said that's what they were going yeah. to do. Yeah, but I, guess so. I there's no way it went as smoothly as it, like that like oh they got their gear they went up the thing they jumped over the thing and then they were gone like I'm sure probably a little bit of kerfuffles and speed bumps in the road they had to go through but Alan wasn't there because he didn't get his ventilator loose so sorry Alan uh so to round out the FBI page title. The mystery continues. Bum, bum, Thanks. Bum, bum. Thanks, FBI. Bum, bum. What happens next remains a mystery. Did they make it across the bay, get to Angel Island, and then cross Raccoon Strait into Marin County as planned? Those all sound like made up places. <laughs> Raccoon Strait. Like, this is like Animal Crossing. Like, they made it across the bay and got to Angel Island, and then they went across to Raccoon Strait into Marin Country County 
as planned? I'm sure they did not. Or did the wind and waves get the better of them? Plenty of people have gone to great lengths to prove that the men could have survived. But the question remains, did they? The FBI's investigation at the time concluded otherwise for the following reasons. <laughs> this is why they assume that they did not survive. Aside from, you know, common sense. <laughs> There's no way. But they, crossing the bay, yes, youngsters, again, this is all directly taken from the FBI website. Yes, youngsters have made the more than mile long swim from Alcatraz to Angel Island. But with the strong currents and frigid bay water, the odds were clearly against these men. Three if by land. They love a little, good little title. Uh, the plan, according to the FBI's prison informant, was to steal clothes and a car once on land. But the FBI never uncovered any thefts like this, despite the high-profile mm. nature of the case. Family ties. If the escapees had help, the FBI couldn't substantiate it. The families appeared unlikely to even have the financial means to provide any real support. But as we said, crime, uh, crime is a small game. So you never know who else that they knew out there. Uh, and finally, missing in action. For the next 17 years, the FBI worked on the case. No credible evidence emerged to suggest the men were still alive, either in the U.S. or overseas. What's your cat's name? It's Darcy. Darcy? Wasn't it one of your cat's birthdays recently? It was Darcy's birthday yesterday. Oh, oh mazel. Happy birthday, Darcy. He really is like all up in my business today. Yeah, he he's he just wants to be on camera. We'll get we'll get Darcy uh, on camera next time. We'll get we we'll get Darcy a mic and he'll be in a separate room on Zoom. He loves to talk. Oh, we can hear. We've heard. <laughs> <laughs> so based on the FBI's four reasons, the fact the cold waters, uh, someone would have seen them if they had made it. Their families didn't help them, and. It, oh, 17 years, they found nothing that proved that they could potentially, like, uh, if uh, somebody had stolen anything in the area or, like, they, no thing fed the description. Uh, so, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Do you guys think they made it? I just feel like something else of their life preservers or their raft would have turned up. If they had made it? If they hadn't made it. Mm. Yeah. Because it probably wouldn't have sunk to the bottom if it was just no, like rubber raincoats and had wood. Like, right. Even if it had deflated, it unless it was like super heavy, which maybe the raft was with the life preservers, I don't think would have. I feel like that stuff would have floated. Also, ideally, that's what those are made to do. Yeah. True. Also, in theory they would have been in those life preservers. So even if they had somehow drowned or were just out at sea and then like died from dehydration or hunger or something, in theory, their bodies would have been in those life preservers. Unless they drifted like really far out mm -hmm. to sea. Yeah. Like, Unless they're literally in the middle of the ocean, right. the air runs out. They pulled and then Amelia they Earhart or something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, like that's the only thing I could think of. Yeah. Either that or they made it. But the FBI officially closed its case on December 31st, 1979, and turned over responsibility to the U.S. Marshal Service, which continues to investigate in the unlikely event that the trio is still alive. How old would they be if they're still alive? Well, let's see. We're uh, knocking on a hundred store. Yeah. yeah, I guess it's true. Just under, yeah. Because they were, uh, yeah. Uh, Frank Lee Morris was born 1926. So, 97, 96, depending on the month. So, pretty up there. Yeah. You know what? They're probably hanging out with D.B. Cooper. And they're all just hanging out somewhere, being old guys who escaped. and The big they're... FBI website in the sky. <laughs> or, like, where's a... Is it Cuba? Or where they think that, like, Tupac and Elvis and Michael Jackson are, like, all living out, you know? Is that supposed to be in Cuba? I, I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> so they're there with them. What does Darcy know that we don't know? Hmm. I think Darcy's Dar like the reincarnation. 
one of these missing people. Darcy was a little quick to answer. Do you have something to say? Who are you? Darcy knows. Darcy knows too much. So the FBI, as I was researching this, obviously, as you guys know, as the FBI knows, I'm a big fan of their website. However, they left out some details. So these are just some small details I found that they left out that I thought were important enough to say. So some sources say that the inmates dug through the air vents in their cells with sharpened spoons mm-hmm. purloined from the prison cafeteria, as opposed to like some saw that they found somewhere, which the spoons, I feel like makes more sense. I feel like that's what it always is in uh, prison escape movies that they're like picking at it with a spoon or something from the mess hall. The hair that they used for the dummies heads was real human hair that they had got from the prison barber shop. That makes that as I think you said, Chris, that seems like the easiest thing to get. Yeah. One of you said that. Um, Alan West, the fourth inmate who didn't make it, claimed to have been the mastermind himself. Oh, I bet which, he did. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure he was like, actually, I all these guys were able to escape because I sacrificed myself. When West was unable to get through the ventilator grill at the rear of his cell, Morris and the Anglins were forced to leave him behind. The trio climbed some 30 feet up the prison plumbing system to the roof of the cell house. They crossed 100 feet of rooftop and made it down 50 feet of piping, hitting the ground near the exit to the inmates' shower area. After this point, no one ever saw or heard from Morris or the Anklin brothers again. Oh, so maybe like another inmate saw them or something. Like it, mm, this yeah. makes it sound like someone saw them doing all of this. Yeah, and being like, oh, they, I saw them go up there and then there and then there, like saw, saw them from their window. So according to West, who finally managed to escape his cell, and make it to the rooftop only to find that his fellow inmates had disappeared, which already, that's so, like, that's sad. (laughs) Because then I can only assume that then he was caught. It's not, like, attempting to escape. But, like, that he Yeah, at that point, do you just go back to bed and be like, ah, shucks, I missed the boat? (laughs) Yeah. Otherwise, it's die in the water. But that he gets up to the roof like, guys, guys! (gasps) And he, like, sees a raft in the distance, and he's like, I missed the boat. That's so sad. Um, but uh, the plan, so he was the one to explain that the plan had been to use the makeshift raft to reach Angel Island. After some rest, the men would then re enter the bay on the opposite side of the island and swim through the so called Raccoon Straits as they on their way to Marin County, where they would steal a car and burglarize a clothing store before going their separate ways. But no such crimes were reported anywhere in Marin County within 12 days of the escape a fact that authorities would point to as support for their conclusion that the attempt had failed. Um, So, and then one more just kind of fun fact that I found. Of the 36 inmates who staged 14 escape attempts over the 29 years that Alcatraz served as a federal penitentiary, 23 were recaptured, six were shot and killed, two drowned, and five, Morris, the Anglins, and Theodore Cole and Ralph Rowe, are listed as missing and presumed drowned. You know what's interesting? What's interesting? If you were to ask anybody on the street, you know, what's what's probably the most famous prison in history? I feel like most people would say Alcatraz. Yeah. You know, it was only open for 29 years as a prison. Yeah. I think or as a federal pet, oh, excuse me. You said since the Civil War. All right. Yeah. Never mind. I, I think it I been just what like I just said. Yeah. No, but even still, as like the high maximum security, like what it's known for, the fact that it was only 29 years. Yeah, it had been operating as like a prison or jail well before then. But the fact that they were like, all right, we're going to upgrade it, iron bars, all this stuff, the bells and whistles, 29 years, and then a bunch of people have already escaped that they're like, you know what? Maybe it didn't work out and we should stop marketing this as like, you can't escape. (laughs) It's like Titanic being in the unsinkable ship. Yeah, exactly. Now I ask again, knowing what we know, now you know how they escaped. Do you think you can escape a prison? Knowing their mastermind planned of what they did. If they had access to magazines and woodshop materials and all this stuff, like I thought in this prison you had like very little to work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They had 50 raincoats that they could like disassemble like yeah they had maybe. a whole bunch of mouse tools they were doing great as long as i didn't have to drill those holes i would have been fine 
<laughs> yeah. You'd have I to can't, have your... what's, what is that called again? What would you call it? I, trypophobia? I think some people call it, like it's pronounced trypophobia, but I've also heard trypophobia. It's, I've never heard of this before. If so you look it up, some really gnarly images will show up. So oh, I don't know. oh, yeah, it's tri- oh, trypophobia is how it's it phonetically. It's T R Y P O P H O B I A. I'm not even going to share my screen. I'm not going to even show it to the people watching on YouTube because then people will click out <laughs> if they have it. But it is, uh, I'm going to click images. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. I'm scared. Oh. I'm scared. Why are you doing this to yourself? The uh, ones uh, the ones that are the most well, freaky. Well, I'm scared of that, too. Jesus Christ. The, the ones that are the most freaky are like when it's on a human hand well, or something like that. Yeah. It was on the bottom of the foot. I didn't if, like that yeah. one. If it's on like, if it's a flower that's just got a lot of small holes, okay. Mm-hmm. But it's like when you see like, no no even like thinking about it is making me feel all right so then we'll think about we'll go back going back to alcatraz yeah um yeah i mean nothing but respect for the homies morris and the anglin brothers like they made it i don't know what and pour one out for alan let's pour one out for him pour one out for alan he did uh he died about 18 years after this happened i assume in prison in 1978 um, because I assume they did not let him out after he had been arrested like 20 times. Um, but yeah, so that's uh that's the June 1962 Alcatraz prison escape attempt. You know, similar to DB Cooper, I like I hope that they made it. Well, okay, were any of them in jail for violent crimes, or was it like let's a lot of rob like bank robbery? Because if they were stealing from the man. Well, let's uh, quickly, I'll buzz through a little bit more about them. Frank Morris was born in D.C. His parents abandoned him when he was 11. So he spent the rest of his childhood in foster homes in orphan. He was convicted of his first criminal offense at 13. And by his late teens, he had been arrested for crimes ranging from narcotics possession to armed robbery. He spent most of his early years in jail serving lunch to prisoners. Later, he was arrested for grand larcenery in Miami Beach, car theft and armed robbery. Morris repeatedly ranked in the top 2% of the general population in intelligence as measured by IQ testing. He heard, he served time in Florida and Georgia, then escaped from the Louisiana State Penitentiary while serving 10 years for bank robbery. He was recaptured a year later while committing a burglary and sent to Alcatraz. Okay. That feels like uh, feels like the system's fault. For, yeah. because he was jumping through foster homes he never had a also, solid childhood yeah and it doesn't sound like like armed robbery doesn't necessarily mean you like injured Guilty. anyone it means you just had a weapon right yeah, yeah. okay so and like narcotics possession ah. okay yeah. theft who hasn't theft before guys who hasn't car theft and armed robbery before john and uh, clarence did John and Clarence, uh, they were born into a family of 14 children in Donaldsville. So statistically, a couple of them were going to become criminals then. Yeah. 14? 14 children. I assume they were two of those 14, but even still. Same, like one pair of parents. Yeah. The Duggars up in here. Do you, they were from Man. Georgia. They were from Georgia. You want to know what their uh, parents, there it is. You know what yeah. their parents were? <laughs> They were farmers. I uh, bet. <laughs> so not a lot to do it out in Georgia. Uh, they were they were seasonal farmers. So you know when you're in the off season, you got wouldn't a lot of all free farming time. be seasonal? Well, I assume that just means they weren't farming year round. Okay. Well, sure, that's what seasonal means. Thanks, yeah, Chief. Aren't <laughs> aren't some farms like constantly doing stuff all year round or yeah, if you have like cows and stuff you can oh all right yeah that's fair also like georgia maybe they were only growing like peaches or fruit or like stuff that then doesn't like won't grow during other whatever mm-hmm. anyway um in the 19 in the early 1940s they moved the family to florida 20 miles south of tampa where the truck farms and tomato fields provided a more reliable source of income each june they migrated north as far as michigan to pick cherries Florida to Michigan in the 40s cannot be a short trek. No. Good Lord. To pick cherries? 
It must have been damn good cherries. <laughs> um, Clarence and John were reportedly inseparable as youngsters. Oh. So, you know, could have separated them in the prison. Maybe that's a sign. <laughs> Uh, they became skilled swimmers. Oh, swimming in the mm. bay. Uh, and amazed their siblings by swimming in the frigid waters of Lake Michigan as ice still floated on the surface. So they wow. were training for this. <laughs> as children. Clarence was first caught breaking into a service station when he was 14 years old. The brothers began robbing banks and other establishments as a team in the early 1950s usually targeting businesses that were closed to ensure that no one got injured. That's so sweet. That's nice. Oh. Love that. Uh, they claimed that they used a weapon only once during a bank heist, a toy gun. Hmm. In 1958, John Clarence and Alfred Anglin robbed the Columbia Savings Bank building in Columbia, Alabama. All received 35-year sentences, which they served at Florida State Prison. Uh, Levensworth Federal Penitentiary and then Atlanta Penitentiary. After repeated attempts to escape from the Atlanta facility, John and Clarence were transferred to Alcatraz. So at least the brothers were pacifist criminals. Yeah. That's yeah, like I, Yeah. They sound I hope they made it out. Yeah. yeah. I'm all right with them being around. And then mm-hmm. even I had said Alan West, he was arrested over 20 times. He was in prison for car theft. <laughs> Like so what? All right. Grow least, up. So none of these guys killed anyone. Yeah. They didn't like assault anyone. The yeah. England brothers, they had they used a weapon once and it was a toy gun. It was a nerf gun. You know, yeah. you... they were just trying to make it seem like they were like it was like in their pocket and they were like, I got a gun. But I mean, imagine they were like committing crimes at like 13, 14. Imagine like a 13 year old trying to rob you. <laughs> Like, get out of here, kid. Go back to what was the 13 year old middle school? Yes, yeah, yeah. Seventh, seventh grade, seventh grade, seventh grade. Yeah. Seventh grade. <laughs> Actually, you know what? If a seventh grader tried to rob me, I'd probably be pretty spooked. <laughs> 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 middle schoolers nowadays, scary. Middle schoolers in the 30s or 40s, scarier, <laughs> probably, unless they were like, Yeah, give me all you got. They all spoke in. <laughs> Give me your money, see? They all spoke in old timey accents because it was old time and maybe Again, movies existed. It was like the 50s. They were speaking normally. But then. Well, the transatlantic accent, I don't think reached that. It was long. the late 30s. It was the late okay. 30s when, oh, they right, were commi- okay. when they were children. Maybe they had like a, a tinge of it left. <laughs> like a, well, and actually, the, the Anglin brothers were from Georgia and Florida. So they were like super Southern. So. So, if uh, if they're out there, they probably don't know how to listen to podcasts. So they're probably not listening <laughs> to this because, like, I don't think anyone above the age of like sixty, and I feel like that might be str- like knows how. My to my grandpa listens to podcasts. Okay. Yeah, you never know. They were like smart guys. You think a ninety-six year old knows? Well, how to- no, probably if not. A ninety-six year old that Ooh, escaped has- from Alcatraz was True. still alive. I wouldn't put it past them that they can listen well, to a podcast. Then Frank's probably listening to like NPR, not this. You never <laughs> maybe. Know. I think we also said last time with DB Cooper that. Do you think any like criminals like this would like? Do you think DB Cooper's seen all the movies and stuff made about him? Same type of way. If these guys made it out. There was a movie, and Clint Eastwood was in it. I was going to yeah. watch it before this, but I didn't. There was a movie about this escape. It's called yeah. Escape from Alcatraz. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Very famous It had movie. Clint Eastwood was in it, and a bunch of I believe questions. Paul Newman as well. I believe. Uh, Don't quote me on that. Fred Ward, Jack Thimbo, and Larry Hankin. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Um, but yeah, and Clint Eastwood was, I think, Frank Morris? Yeah. Frank Morris. So, great guy to play Frank Morris. Yeah. Really fits right in. Um, so, that's all for this week. Any other final thoughts about our homies? No. All the power to you. You heard it here from hers, folks. It's great escape from prison. If you're in prison and you have a chance to escape, make sure that you're willing to lose at least one of your guys. <laughs> you got to leave someone behind. But make sure they don't know as much. Otherwise, they're going to tell the FBI 
everything, and then they'll write a whole page about it. Unless that's what they want. They wanted Dick Wolf to write a page for the FBI about their escape, so they seemed cooler than they probably were. That's the pinnacle. The thing came off my ear button and stuck in my ear. (laughs) Oh, the little, uh, the, that's not, is it still stuck in your ear? Oh, no. Oh, this seems like a good place to end it. (laughs) Gotta go find tweezers. Please don't put tweezers in your ear. Well, it's like, well, he doesn't want it to go deeper. Yeah, I gotta get this out. This has been fun, guys. (laughs) All right. See you next week. Bye. This podcast is produced and engineered by Gavin Berger with High Tops Media. The Dark Archive is co-hosted by Gavin Berger, Julia Siegel, Chris Massarelli, and Shaila Jayasingha. Our theme music is composed by Jeffrey Taylor. You can rate and review The Dark Archive on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and check out more episodes of The Dark Archive available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. And be sure to follow us on Instagram at The Dark Archive Podcast, and on TikTok at The Dark Archive. And see more of our content with High Tops Media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at High Tops Media.